you're ready. Hi, uh, my name is Marge Fulton and I'm at the uh, Kentucky Appalachian Paranormal Society's second annual convention here at Jenny Wiley uh, State Park. And I came over here with uh, a couple of uh, fellow artists to show some of our uh, unusual art pieces. Uh, and also, I'm an author, so I kind of have a uh, split personality, I guess, that I I write and, uh, you know, I deal a lot with that. I'm a, you know, I also paint and sketch a lot, so I go back and forth. And uh, my latest book, it's called The Holler. It uh, was published in April of this year from Blackworm Press out of Louisville, and I'm so fortunate to find them. They publish um, fantasy and uh, science fiction, just a lot of alternative mediums, and there's a horror guy on their staff, so he edited my book. He gave me some really great ideas where, you know, I had these stories all worked out, and then he would think of something like, well, could you add that? And and he, uh, <clears throat> he really helped me kind of kick it up a notch. So uh, Jason Walters was uh, my story editor, and uh, he helped me a lot. So the hauler was, you know, I, if anyone had ever asked me a few years ago, would you ever write a horror book, it would be, <laughs> I would have responded, no way. You know, that was just not my, my thing. I wrote poetry and uh, kind of southern fiction. I've, I've written for probably 25 years, had stories and poems published in uh, journals, <coughs> uh, lots of magazines, whatnot. But, you know, when you get a little older, sometimes you're more willing to try something uh, totally off the wall, because uh, you've done other things, you think, well, why not? And a friend of mine said, you know, horror really sells. Uh, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll try it. And it became addictive. It really did. The first story, uh, that I wrote in this collection of, of 24 stories, a story called Black Santa, and it's about a girl who's almost completely deaf, and she has an abusive uh, parent, and when she was young, she wasn't allowed to have uh, this Black Santa doll, and the story kind of takes its twists and turns, but uh, as an adult, that's just a, an issue that she has always felt bad about. Uh, so she goes, she's determined to get one, and she kind of has the mind of a child anyway. But, uh, so once I wrote that story, I was like, well, where in the world did that come from? You know, I, I didn't think I could even, <coughs> even uh, think of storylines like that. And then I, you know, I wrote more and more uh, horror, and, uh, and then I had some ideas on some things that were really not, you know, uh, they were fantasy related. So just put them all together, and uh, the horror has, I mean, the, the holler, um, actually my daughter thought of the name, and it just seems like such a basic name. I think, well, surely someone's thought of that before, but they hadn't. I haven't found another book uh, called the, the Holler, and uh, so it was just a good fit. I've, I've just had a blast with this book, and when you, you know, when you are over 50 and you just suddenly do something that you never even thought you could do, it, it, it empowers you to do even more. So my artwork has taken, uh, uh, been energized, I guess you'd say, where I've, I've painted some fantasy images and, and I do a little of everything in my artwork. So anyway, uh, The Holler is a book that, uh, you know, it does represent the Appalachian area with uh, very uncanny characters, people who are uh, really on the verge of uh, losing their minds, uh, people who, who are so isolated. That's, that was the kind of the uh, background for the book because so many of the characters in the holler are so isolated due to geography that they, uh, they really don't have any check and balance <coughs> for, for what's normal or whatnot. So you have some people that live in their own reality and uh, and do things that you would never dream of. So you don't need to go to outer space or, or uh, another realm to, to find a world that's different. And, you know, living here, and I, I love living here, we've lived uh, in Hazard for 20 years and moved here from a big city 
So we kind of are green acres in reverse, I guess, where we, uh, you know, came to the country and, and absolutely love it. But uh, there, you know, there's a side to living here that is just so different. I guess it's almost paranormal. People you meet that are uh, not like people anywhere else. And I thought, well, let me just use characters like that. And uh, so, you know, I, uh, the holler has got something for everyone. The stories are short. I've read a lot of uh, short, short fiction, mm -hmm. flash fiction. I've, the, I've, you know, kind of become a fan of that, and I've wanted to write some, but it was really easy to write flash fiction with horror because you can just have somebody stumble into something yeah. uh, unthinkable, and then uh, something totally bizarre happens, and that's the end of the story. So I, I like doing the, the short shorts. You don't really have to explain uh, what happened before or kind yeah. of tie up the loose ends. You just leave it, leave it hanging. Yeah. And uh, so I, I'm really proud of this book. Uh, it's, it's funny though because it's like I don't really want certain people in my family, you know, to read it. It's uh, because it's like a side of me that no one has seen before. <laughs> but uh, I've had I've had really good reaction to the book. And, it's for sale on the uh, blackworm.com site and of course on Amazon and, and all these uh, these sites. It's a good price. Um, so check it out. I think you'll, if you're a fan of horror, speculative fiction in any way, shape, or form, uh, this, this book is, uh, it's regional horror and uh, that's, that's something that I'm, I'm really proud of. You can read horror stories that can take place anywhere, you know, New York City or or uh, anywhere. But this, you know, being regional horror, it's one of a kind and something that you know you don't have to be from uh, Eastern Kentucky or Appalachia to really understand uh, what goes on or the way people think. Yeah. In the book, uh, it's not complicated. <laughs> so I hope that the book, uh, you know, you can get your hands on the book. If, uh, if you can't get it, ask your library to order it uh, in any, any way, shape, or form. And it's also available with electronic formats. Uh, I can't name them all. I think one is called <laughs> uh, Smashwords. There are several uh, ebook formats that do have the book. And you can also go, go on, uh, I think, Smashwords and read uh, several of the stories for free. I think some of these places post like half of the book for free. Which I figure, if you read half the book, some people may say, "Well, I might as well read the rest of it." Yeah, <laughs> but uh, some of the best stories are at the end, so don't don't be happy with just half. And, uh, but thank you so much for letting me talk about it, and I, I love writing. I've kind of gotten more into my visual art lately. Uh, it's just sort of a tangent that I'm on, but I have a lot of stories in my head, and when I when I sit down to write them. Uh, it just kind of takes over, so <laughs> I'll be working on another book this winter. Hopefully it'll, it'll do as well as this one has. This one's done great. So, thank you. You're welcome.